All right, today, ladies and gents, we're going to be talking about things you may or may not know about Zara's live effects. Live effects are also known as plugins or as um, as filters um, in in other software. Uh, I'm going to be using those terms interchangeably, so don't get confused. They're all the same thing. Um, uh, Typically, a plugin or a filter is something you use with a bitmap, so a um, like a photo, um, a static image. Um, the difference with live effects is that they can be used on um, vector drawings as well. All right, so I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Um, let's uh, dig right in. Here we go. Here's a Here's a, just a random uh, piece of uh, drawing that I made. It's just a shape. Um, here, I'll show you the the line, the outline view, right? It's just a, a shape that I've made. Uh, here you can also see down in the corner one shape on uh, a layer mouse off, right? So with that selected, I can go to the live effects. And it's this FX button. It's on the uh, uh, photo tool flyout. Uh, so all where you have all the uh, um, your, your various photo tools, and I've shifted my uh, my toolbars around, so don't let that confuse you. Your your photos uh, tool may fly out might be in a different location than mine. Um, I just this is the way I like to work, so I've I've moved things around. And if you want to learn how to do that, I have a separate video on how to uh, make your own toolbars and move your things around and set up your uh, your uh, Zara. Uh, to, to work how you want, uh, how I set mine up anyway. Um, so I'll click, go ahead and click on the live effects, and that brings up the live effects toolbar right here at the top. And let's talk about uh, what the, the different uh, tools are here at the top. So uh, clicking on the, uh, the new button will uh, give you a new effect. Um, this uh, drop down will show you all of the effects applied in order and then one in the top field uh, is the current effect. Um, this edit button will allow you to edit the current effect. There is no current effect, that's why it's grayed out. Um, the resolution um, of the current effect, uh, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that. Here's where you can delete the current effect. You can lock and unlock all of um, uh, various effects. And here's you, where you can delete all the, the effects that you have applied. So you can layer effects. You can do more than one. And um, and this is where you can uh, affect your setup. So let's go ahead and look at the setup right now of filters or live effects. So let's click on that right now. Clicking that button will bring up the options dialog with the effects and plugins tab already uh, selected. This uh, effects section down here at the bottom, um, it has a check mark uh, where you can select to have new effects are locked by default. So they're automatically locked. If, you, if that's something you wish, um, I don't t particularly like to work that way, but you can if you want. Um, default effect, uh, default live effect resolution. Um, there's a uh, a resolution for what you're, what you're working with and, and once it's been locked. Um, so this is kind of handy. Um, if you uh, set these up like you want to, and there's a, a selection up here for the um, resolution to choose automatic, it's going to uh, choose whatever you have set up here. Um, if you've chosen automatic here. Um, so that refer to to this, which is kind of handy if you want to uh, then, uh, and you have lots of effects applied, uh, and you want to um, say change all of you've been working it, with them in screen resolution to make things move faster um, while you've been working on the file, and then you've decided, okay, now I want to send it off to be printed, and I want to change the resolution of all those effects to print resolution to something like 300 dpi instead of 96 dpi, you can uh, um, you can um, have this set to default locked effect resolution, have that change to the 300 high res uh, print dpi, and uh, and then once you lock all of your effects, all of them get locked, uh, gets set to that resolution. So it's a it's a good way to um, 
to uh, not have to uh, fiddle with, with each individual effect. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and change this back to intermediate. And, uh, and then the last thing here is Photoshop plugins. So let's go ahead and click on this. This is where you can choose a folder for plugins and effects. Now, before I do that, so that's going to go ahead and click cancel. I just want to show you that here are, when I click new, I get a list of the plugins that come with Zar, right? And if you look down to the bottom of my list, um, it, it ends with this, uh, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, Medhi or something like that. Or... In any case, uh, after Redfield, Meh, Medhi or something like that uh, uh, is where they, they end. And so I'm going to go ahead and go back to setup and select my folder where I keep a few, um, a few live effects, a few, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, Adobe filters, right? That's what this works with. So I go to drop boxes, which is where I keep them. Click on filters. That's where I keep my my filters. And I have uh, two different types of filters. I have more uh, many filters and more um, and, and another uh, set of filters from a, a company called Zero with a spelled with an X. And if I click OK, uh, that's all I have to do. Press apply. OK. And now when I look at my filter list again. See, I have not just Medhi, but Medhi two and zero applied with all of those filters uh, in the list now. Okay, so that's it's pretty basic to add new filters. You just put them all in one location and uh, tell Zara what that location is. You can add multiple folders if that's what you want to do, um, but but that's how you do it. You just go go at it and and apply. Uh, filter. So let's get stuck in and uh, take a look at at how they are applied. So let's go ahead and apply a filter here, and we're going to go. Uh, let's go ahead with this Jamba filter because that's something that's quick and easy and basic and looks good uh, um, without me having to, to fiddle with the the controls of the filter itself. Um, so we're going to apply that one first, and then um, because, like I said, you can layer filters, I'm going to add another filter to this. So I'm going to go to the color filter, and then I was going to go to uh, the color with gradient. And I'm going to choose a, let's see, a blue to green gradient. And say that there we go. That looks fine. So I'm going to leave it like that. So that's now you can see I have. In my drop-down list, I have two filters applied. Um, I can delete one of them, right? I have this one selected. I can delete that one, and I goes back to the to just the one. I can undo that, and both of my filters are back, right? Um, and I can keep on applying filters. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's. Uh, um, I could I could also lock uh, or unlock the effects and I can also delete all of them. So if I wanted to delete all of them, look there, all of my filters are gone. I can undo that as well. And they're both back. So let's go ahead and add one more real quick. Um, let's go to the, oh, let's try a deformation filter. Uh, and uh, let's try the even waves. Um, you know what, let me just type in some things here. And it's going to apply this filter every time I enter in a number. And you can play with these. It's you know it's kind of whatever you want. And then once I'm done with it, I can just close the the filter dialog, and there we go. I've got three different filters applied. Right. And I can continue to add filters as, as long as I want, but that's that's kind of the 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 key that that this is um, a vector shape that is has multiple filters applied. Now I want to show you something about the fact that this is still a vector shape. If I slide this down back down to line view, look, there's my 
my shape still in uh, in outline view. And I can still affect this just like I can any other vector shape. So if I go here with my with my pencil or freehand and brush tool, right, and get on the edge and start like that until my pencil shows that uh, that little squiggly line, right? Well, must have not gotten it quite, but there. Look, I've just added to the shape, right? And uh, if I go back to my my line view, you can see that's where I've added that uh, that extra bit of curve there to my original shape, and still a vector object, right? And I can do the same thing here with taking a slice out of it, right? If I go back to my vector, my line art, right, my line outline uh, view, I can see that uh, I've just taken a slice out of that um, that basic shape, okay? And, um, and anyway, this is still a vector shape. It still has all three of those filters applied to it, and uh, that's kind of what I wanted to cover uh, for this. So this also works for bitmaps, right? So bitmaps, um, uh, basic, you know, JPEG, uh, PDF type, or not PDF, uh, um, you know, JPEG type files, um, PNG type files, like those types of things, uh, B BMP files, all bitmap type files that uh, you can apply filters to. So let's uh, go ahead and select this one and apply a filter to it. And uh, I'm going to try uh, this Matty Fur filter. And um, let's try here. I'm going to just play around with a couple of things. Say OK. And it's applying the live effect. It's working on it. And I'm going to have to get in close to show you what that effect has actually done. But there you go. Right? It's basically converted my, my bitmap into a bunch of little individual lines. Yeah? And there's not a lot to this, OK? Uh, you can play with just about any filter you want. Um, how the filters themselves work is up to the individual filter. Um, you know, the the filter tool itself just gives you the basic um, access to adding a filter, right? It lets you say, I want to apply a filter. It, it's basically a filter picker or a live effect picker. Uh, once you've picked the live effect that you want to uh, um, you want to, to add uh, to your drawing, then the filter itself takes over uh, with its own controls. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, this still remains a bitmap. Uh, it's still completely editable. editable. This is non-destructive. You can undo anything that you've done. Um, just like anything else in Zara, you have unlimited undos. Um, you can remove this filter, and and you're back to your original picture. Um, you know, uh, all the same things apply that apply a anywhere else. Uh, if you wanted to edit this photo before you did that, right? You wanted to go to your photo editing tool and you know apply some extra uh, contrast and and maybe uh, I don't know some darken it up a little bit and uh, I don't know cool it off right uh, make it a little bit cooler with the colors or something like that or, or or whatever right you can play with any of that and then apply the filters and it's still all that stuff still works so uh, that's that's kind of all I was trying to get at uh, with with that last little bit but uh, I hope that you found this interesting and useful, and uh, we'll come back and visit us again soon.